You already know where we are. I've said it before every show. We've just finished all of them. I want you to enjoy the interviews from people that you will not believe some of the personal things they're going to share with you. Their books, their testimony, every part of this program you will enjoy. Please sit back, enjoy what God has in store for you. Thank you for watching. God bless you. I love you. Thank yes. you for joining us today. We're at the National, National Religious, Religious Broadcast. That's it, okay. right here in Nashville, Tennessee. All of this crazy noise you're going to hear. In fact, the overhead speakers go yeah, on everything. from time to time. Just ignore it. So just bear with us. You know why? Because why? we have Johnny Erickson Tata and this good looking guy sitting right next to her. Well known for the back of his head. <laughs> his head. <laughs> We're going to get into the most, actually the most personal book I have ever read that Johnny has written. And and I was just telling Ken, we were talking just before we went on, I said, man, you've got to write a marriage book because this guy would be God's example right. here on earth of what commitment really means. Thank you guys for being yeah, with us. Absolutely. We go way back. We, we do, Herman and Sharon, but I think this might be the first time. Yes. It is the first time we've been on. Yes. It's yes. my first time. Yes. That's I'm right. excited. Go great. We're excited. Yeah. You knew her when she was single. <laughs> she has a lot of good things to say about you guys. Yes. Oh, well, that's great. That's, that's right. Great. But we're going to have the website so you can get every book, every location that they're going to be, and just follow them all over the world, actually. <laughs> but this is the latest book. And I'm telling you, it, even if you never open it and just frame this, it'd be worth it. But inside the covers, in fact, they come the hard copy, don't they? Because yeah, this is my advanced copy. copy. Yeah. Wouldn't take anything for it. But when you get your copy, you will start reading it just like I did. Mm -hmm. And you will hate the fact that it actually has to end at the last chapter. I mean, it's amazing writing. But it's personal, uh, vulnerable, the kind of thing that will bless you and help you in your walk with the Lord. And I got to tell you, the prayer that Johnny prayed in the book, when I went through that, I wrote it out in longhand. Oh my goodness. Just so that I, see, <laughs> I wanted really this did. to be, yes, I wanted this to be tucked in my Bible. Whoa. So that, I mean, it, the whole book, get this, write it out for yourself, tuck it inside of your Bible. It is an amazing prayer, and we're going to get into it exactly why Before she did that. Before you do that, though. Yes. Uh, I want to talk about the cover oh, of the book. Yes, do that. Because that picture of you is just absolutely beautiful. Oh. Well, I, I love it. It's a great cover. Um, yeah. But I especially like the, the image of Ken on this Yes. Cover. Well, Ken looks handsome, too. Let, I don't want to ignore that. You know, a lot of people look at that who know Ken and say, he looks too serious. That, oh, no. That's not Ken. That's because they haven't read the book. Right. <laughs> and when I look at that image of Ken, when I see that cover of the book, uh, I think, that's 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 the look I saw when he was taking me through chemotherapy wow. all those many months. Wow. That look of concern, that look of serious yeah. uh, apprehension, yeah. of compassion. Yeah. So when I see that, I I see the picture of a husband who deeply cares for his wife. So wow. that, that means a lot. It, have you ever wanted to know what commitment looked like? Get a close up of Ken <laughs> right there. That's commitment. I mean. And when you when you read this, you will absolutely cry, stop reading for a while, recover, and then go back to read it because it's amazing. And we're going to find out how they met, right? We're oh yes, all a lot of people don't know hey, how you actually met. I've got to tell the people. I just got my new homecoming magazine, <laughs> and guess what's inside? Right. It's an entire story. Yes. Yes, and and I mean, I I thought, wow, this is a, if I can find it again. It's in here someplace, I promise you. I should have never shown the cover. Here it is, right there. So get your latest Gaither Homecoming magazine. This is a great article. Thank you. Everything they do is classy. Yeah, yeah. My goodness. So what prompted this? Because 
it is really well, Herman, can personal. I talk about that picture for a second? Yes. Because you were correct. You know, at the uh, the initial diagnosis of Johnny's cancer, um, I wasn't sure whether or not I was going to have my best friend around in that coming year because we we didn't know how serious this cancer was. As it turned out, it was stage three cancer, yes, and uh, even serious. then, we weren't sure if she was going to survive. Wow that first year so yeah if my my sister caught my husband at the kitchen sink um she was out there in california helping me do chemotherapy and he was at the kitchen sink and big tears were rolling down his cheeks and he looked at my sister jay and said i might i might lose my best friend and when she shared that with me it touched me so deeply because for so many years the pressure of my chronic pain the pressure of my quadriplegia had been very wearing on Ken. And it was so wonderful to hear him speak of me as his, as his best friend through, through all the difficult challenges leading up to cancer. So that was because, middle because in the book, you're a gutsy guy, and you to want this out there. But you guys went through some tough days. A lot of it was depression. Almost, it was almost platonic relationship. Well, people sit, asked, uh, didn't you know what you're getting into when you first got married? And yeah. sure, I knew that Johnny was disabled, but you know, about the first year, uh, the 24 seven, the routine yes. started to set in yes. and uh, it got wearing. I just got tired and I felt guilty holding this all in. And there came a night when I just had to sit on the edge of Johnny's bed and, and we were talking and I said to her, you know, Johnny, I, I'm just feeling trapped. And, and you know, back then, my response was far from compassionate. When he said he felt trapped, my response was, well, what's the matter? Didn't you realize it was gonna be like this when you married me? I'm a quadriplegic, where was your head? Weren't you thinking? Yeah. I mean, as soon as I said that, I, I, I felt like stuffing the words back in my mouth. And I remember saying to Ken, oh, Ken, I am, I'm so sorry, that's just not like me. That's not like me at all. But. Through the years of our marriage, I, I began to see that is like me. And, and I think God uses the difficulties in marriage to squeeze a lemon, as it were, and outpours all the unpretty stuff of who we are on the inside that needs to be confessed and redeemed. And, and that's what our marriage has been. It's been a, a rigorous, rugged, challenging, but deep, sweet, intimate journey of opening up ourselves before God and each other. And it's been great. We had to reach a point where, exactly. you know, Johnny understood that I still loved her, yeah. but the disability was wearing. Sure. And uh, I think we have, uh, over the years, been able to get to that point, you know, where she understands I love her, but sometimes, you know, I just get tired. Well, you're this history teacher, this sports-minded guy, coach, so you, you, you get all of this you know, testosterone, you know, kind of macho guy. So, I mean, you do, you, you have that, you know, male thing of you where you go, okay, you know, is, is this what, like, and then the Lord said something to you, not in a verbal way. Well, I, you know, I was on a uh, fishing trip actually, and my wife is a big supporter of me going fishing because she knows that when I come back, I come back so much richer. And you're a fly fisher too. Right? I love fly fishing. Yeah. So when I was out there, uh, we take a bunch of men and uh, actually have what a is that? What is that program? Wild it's called Wild, Wild Adventures. Okay, because you so wear we, the cap sometimes. Yeah. Yes. So we go out and, and uh, one of the exercises we have is for men to go out and hear, try to hear what God has to say to them. And I can remember, oh, this was a number of years ago, um, when I went walked out there the first time I, I didn't hear anything. But this was a couple years after that, and I, I actually know exactly where I was when I heard God's voice, not an audible voice, but God's voice saying, Johnny's the most precious gift I've given you. You take care of her. And, and you know. What did that do to you? Well, you know, at, the, at, the, at that particular point, I thought, you know, God, I, I, I have been taking care of Johnny. I didn't quite understand it. But back in 2010, when Johnny was diagnosed with this cancer, it all came together. And I realized that's what God was saying to me, you know, to take care of her. And it, 
uh, school. And it's just been a real privilege. It's been a privilege to be able to be used of God that way. So how did you meet this guy, Johnny? Oh, well, <laughs> when, when he came home from that fly fishing trip and told me what the Lord had put on his heart, Johnny, you're the most precious gift God's given me, and I, I'm going to take care of you. <laughs> it was like music to my ears because for so long my disability had been such a wearing thing on him a source of such depression and discouragement and to hear him say that he that he wanted to take care of me not out of duty but out of love was like a breath of fresh air and it made our battle against cancer an adventure um, we, we entered it we entered it as closer than ever we entered it as partners and and it wasn't just me battling cancer it was it was together us as a couple dealing with this and it drew us so so much closer to the to Tell Lord. about the trip to the airport the trip to the airport trip and, to the airport and you almost had an accident and you oh, flipped yes. her over inside the van right well I, I we were rushing to get to the airport and I was tied down, but for some reason, uh, one of the tie downs came loose, and Ken had to slam on the brakes, and it was thick traffic, and I fell out of my wheelchair in the back of the van, I fell on the floor, and I didn't realize it at the time, but I broke my leg. Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, my girlfriend and Ken just picked me back up, put me in a wheelchair, and off we went to the airport. And now, Ken, I, to interrupt, you didn't want her to go after that. Well, I didn't want her to go, but I initially didn't want her to sit. We normally don't yeah. have her sitting forward and back. We you have were having a problem where she was sitting, yeah. Yeah, but I... So when I, I went ahead and disregarded Ken's advice, yeah. and I went to fly east, landed in Baltimore, Maryland, and my leg was so swollen. Uh, we how did you find out something's broken? Because this, it's in the book, but it, I never knew this. Your temperature goes up. My temperature just spikes, skyrockets, and I get sweats and chills. That's the only way I know something is wrong with my body. Wow. So the paramedics were waiting for me at the airplane. Uh, Ken was 3,000 miles away yeah. back in California. Yeah. They take me to ER. I'm really by myself. And uh, and I, when, when the nurse dials Ken and he learns that I've broken my leg, he, he says, Johnny, I'm coming. I said, no, 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 sweetheart, you don't have... No, I'm coming. I want to be there. I belong there. I, I get should cold be there. Joke, would you say? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's just when he said on the phone, I want to be there. Yeah. I belong there. Yeah. It just it just warmed my heart to know that he felt that that we belong together. Tell him about that hospital though. That hospital had yes. a great <laughs> Where did you hear this? Well, it was it was so ironic because there I am sitting in this hospital in the ER room looking around and I'm realizing Oh my goodness, this is the first hospital that the, the paramedics brought me to when I broke my neck as a teenager. Oh Can you goodness. believe this? An Anne Arundel General Hospital and in, in right near the Chesapeake Bay, and I could not believe it that that this was the same ER room that they oh escorted me in goodness. when I had crushed my neck as a teenager having dived in the Chesapeake Bay. And here I was back forty some odd years later. Um, and and looking around and feeling a whole different array of thoughts how grateful to god i had been for the way he protected and provided for me over the many years full circle full circle and it meant so good to have ken there it was so great to have him there now i've got to, i've got to share this with you because uh, she's got a great pastor everybody knows him oh yes mm -hmm. john MacArthur. and she Love loves john him. MacArthur. Oh. loves him it. And she was in church, I'm building up to when Ken comes in the picture here. Okay. <laughs> She's in church, and the guy that is speaking, she is really bored <laughs> because it's pretty hard to match John McCarthy. And she is feeling convicted. And so she starts looking and sees a couple of kind of know doing this kind of thing you know have you ever in seen church? in church a guy will do this to a, a girl and it's like 
Does he know he's in church? You know? <laughs> so she's and she's thinking, will I ever have that Lord? She sees this handsome, athletic, wide shoulders, you know, a football neck. But I didn't see his face. Yeah, right? didn't see his face. All this the back of gorgeous his black, shiny hair. <laughs> And in the book, you've got to get the book just for that, because I wrote it down, personally. And she starts praying so that she joins in this service, because, you know, it's not right for me to feel... Right. You what, know, did you, what did you say about him? Well, I prayed all sorts of things. At first, I didn't know who he was, couldn't see his face, didn't see if he was wearing a wedding ring. But I just felt compelled to pray for him out of nowhere. And even as I'm praying for him, I'm thinking, Lord Jesus, this is so strange, so odd. <laughs> Why do you have me praying for this man? And I, he could have been married for all I knew. But I prayed for uh, his friendships, for any conflicts in his family, for his work. I prayed that if he didn't know Christ, he would come to know Jesus. Yeah. I prayed that his love for God's word would deepen, all sorts of things. <laughs> and by the end of the sermon, I almost wheeled up to this man to say, hi there, guess what I just did for you? Yeah. And I thought that would look a little pushy. So I let it drop, but then we happened to be introduced to mutual friends a, oh, a month or so later, and the first thing I said to this man, Ken Tata, was, turn around and let me see the back of your head. <laughs> okay, now, let me stop right there. Don't, don't, don't change, but what did you think? You know, Herman, I had never had anyone pray for the back of my head. <laughs> so the first thing I thought was, hmm, that's a little strange. <laughs> well, maybe some of our single friends should try it. I don't know. It might <laughs> But, I, but it, it sparked an interesting conversation, obviously, and, and uh, by the end of the evening, I, I gathered up enough courage to ask Johnny out for a date. That was our the first date oh. that we had. Yep. And, well, and I, I, remember, I remember this in the book, though. Well, I... I you, she, you were introduced, you said, well, I know who you are, and then you walked away, Johnny goes, I've already forgot his name. She does a, does a 180 and go. You went after him. I went after him, right, right. <laughs> but you know, I've got to tell you, we got to tell you really quick about this first date. Well, I had never taken anybody out in a wheelchair before, but the one thing I did know, I mean, very simple, was that if I was going to take Johnny out by myself, I was going to have to lift her out of this wheelchair and into the car, and right. from the car back into her wheelchair. Either that, or we're going to take somebody along with us. So I was teaching school and coaching at the time, and, and uh, the kids on the football team this. couldn't understand why I was in the weight room all, all week working out so hard. Because <laughs> I had, had set a goal of being able to curl 180 pounds. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just want you to know I'm not 180 pounds. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Please know that's that. coming from a female. Yes. Well, no, no, I knew that Johnny wasn't 180 pounds, but I just didn't want to drop her on our first yeah. date. Yeah, well, I, you, I know that when you lifted me, you thought I was heavy. Because I want you to tell Herman and Sharon what you did. What'd you do? Come on, touch. No, I can't Go ahead. Do I can't Please. Do that. Oh, oh, it's embarrassing. Okay, so when he lifts me, yeah. he puts one arm underneath me and the other arm underneath my legs. And... Hi! Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, does a, he does a karate scream. I felt like I was on a date with Bruce Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't That's in believe the book. it. Well, we went to this restaurant, and I was so nervous. I was so... I mean, I hadn't been out on a date in decades, and... I keep asking Ken during dinner to give me sips of water. Well, after the second glass of water, I realize this is the wrong thing to have been doing, drinking water, because yes, yes. what goes in has to come out. Yeah. Now, I wear a, a bag that's attached to my leg into which I empty, and there's a little clamp down by my ankle that you need a release to let the bag drain. Well, I didn't explain all this to Ken before dinner, <laughs> but I, I said to him, I said, Ken, I'm so sorry, but you're going to have to help me uh, release the tension on my leg bag. We need to go to the restroom. Would you assist me? I said, that's no problem. We can do that. He, I mean, I mean, the guy is, I mean, it's like, well, then, then there's we, not many like this, maybe one. Well, then we go to the restroom alcove, and we just sit there. And I said, well, I'm not going to go into the men's room. And I looked at Johnny, and I said, well, I'm not going to go into the ladies' room. <laughs> so we ended up going outside, and we found this tree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have to have a sense of humor. It I is. mean, it, it, right. it's interesting because... But you know what is amazing? You actually were helping special needs before That's right. your first date. Yeah. 
So I think God had, was preparing me. So you had preparation. Yeah. Special because you had a love yeah. for people with special needs. Well, God, I think, like, God is a sovereign God, and yes. He is obviously is sovereign in everything. So I think His preparation for me in my life was to give me a real heart and interest for special needs kids through Special Olympics. And, um, you, you know, were a track coach for Special was, Olympics. Yeah, I just, you know, helped out the track. Yeah. But, you know, I think at that time, even then, it was, those many years back, it was preparing me for my time with Johnny. And, and when I saw the way this man handled my disability, I thought, Lord, here's a guy who really, he gets it, he can, he can, he can make this work with me. But of course, as Ken said earlier in our time together here, um, after about two or three years of the same routine, it does begin to get wearing. So how long did you guys go together a date before you decided? Oh, about a year, year and a half. So how half. did you top it? Oh, we had some, a great opportunity. We went with uh, Johnny's folks and some friends camping. We used to love to go camping before we got a little bit older. And, and I'm talking about tent camping, yeah. you know, with yeah. the dirt and the tents. Yeah. And, and uh, we were out on Lake George in the Sierras, and Johnny was sitting in the bow of the, the uh, little rowboat that we were in. Oh, when she, the boat turned, and, and, and his head eclipsed the sun, <laughs> and he pops this question, and I just was, I, I, I was awestruck. I was, I was breathless. I was speechless. I, I couldn't believe that I was meeting a man who wanted to marry me, a woman with total quadriplegia, and I said, but Ken, it, do you know what you're asking? And he said, we, we can do it now. Now, there were some people who said, you know, you guys, you should go away first together over a weekend and just try it. Just see if this thing is really, you know, if you're cut out for this, Ken. And Ken and I said, you know, we, we're not going to do that. We wanted to honor God. And we wanted to honor God during our, our time we were dating as well as going into our marriage. And so, you know, we decided yeah. that we would wait and uh, made for an interesting honeymoon because it became <laughs> Handicap Awareness and, Honeymoon. Handicap Awareness Week when our honeymoon is what it was. Now t tell about preparing for the wedding because y you know how perfect you want everything? Uh -huh. She got her gown caught in her oh, wheel. Oh yeah, my gown got caught in my wheel and my, I, my ti I tire tracks on my wedding dress and my, and my flowers were slipping off my lap and I I felt frumpy and all corseted wrong, and here I am in this big gown, oversized gown in this wheelchair, and they had put a wire mesh around the wheels to my chair, but still my gown kept getting caught, and I just felt, oh, I look a mess, but as soon as I wheeled to the top of the aisle, and I looked down there at the front, and I saw my fiancé standing tall and straight, I saw him, and I, I just couldn't wait to get down there. I was so excited to get married to my, my new husband. You know, John MacArthur was the one who married us. And he often has said in the past that it looked like one of those rose parade Well, as, as I came down the aisle. Coming down the aisle. Really? You know, like a rose parade. Oh, it's like great. a float in the rose parade. <laughs> but I, I think that, you know, Johnny and I were nervous leading up to the marriage. Yeah. But the day of the marriage, it became a celebration. It really was. I mean, we were in the right place where God wanted us. And I think we enjoyed ourselves through, throughout the ceremony as well as during the reception. And you know, we touched on the difficult times in our marriage earlier. Well, you are vulnerable in this world. Very much so. And, and as depressing as it got, as difficult and challenging and overwhelming as it was, we, we, we just clung to the Lord Jesus. And we continued the disciplines of reading the Bible and praying so that um, many years later, when we were, getting, we were beginning to see light at the end of the tunnel, there was another night when Ken sat on the edge of my bed and said, I, I don't know that I can, I'm so trapped. This time my response was not, well, what's the matter with you? Didn't you realize? This time my response was, I understand. If I were you, I'd feel the exact same way. I don't blame you, I don't fault you, I'm not gonna scold you. I just want you to know I get it. I'm with you. And we're gonna we're gonna get through this together, Ken. I'm not gonna not gonna fault you for how you feel. I'm just gonna love you and help you through it with my prayers and support. 
which made entering the battle with cancer so much better, so much easier. Can I ask you to do something? Because we've just covered just the surface. It's going to happen to you when you get your book. You're going to start reading it, and anybody that wants to bother you, you'll say, I'll catch you later. i got to finish this. But I want you just to maybe take a couple of minutes, share Christ with that camera, and then tag team if you can. I would like you to close in an opportunity for husbands to make a new commitment. Well, friends viewing, I, I, I don't know where your walk is with God. I don't even know if you know God in a personal way, but maybe you could be sitting there at the kitchen table or on the living room couch, and your marriage is just not making it. It's, it's falling apart. You, 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 you're, wonder, you're wondering if you did the right thing marrying the person you've married. Well, women, may I first ask you to please start praying for your husband. Pray for your husband. Pray diligently for him, as I have for Ken these many years. Um, he won't change overnight, but I tell you, one thing that will change is your heart. Because when you open up yourself to God, when you confess your own shortcomings and sins, when you run to him out of desperate need, then you will be the one who will end up being changed. And you begin to see that your love for your family will grow in a way that you never dreamed possible. So Jesus Christ is extending his hand to you this day. Put your hand in his and trust him, even in the terrible difficulties of your marriage, as difficult or as abusive as it might be, and pray for your husband. Pray for your man. That's why God put you in this marriage. He is the most important person on earth uh, to you, as, as is my husband to me. And so continue to pray for him, and you will see that some remarkable things will happen. I would say this, that Jesus is the most important part of our relationship. And this book, although it says love story, it's a story to men. And you know, guys, in a world where, where vows are not looked at as being what they once were, this is the time to step up to the plate. And we need to love our wives, you know, through sickness or through sickness and in health till death do us part. This is so key and, and uh, something that we hope that would come out strong or the message would be strong in through this book. Absolutely, and as men keep their vows, they become better men. Exactly. Isn't so amazing, isn't it amazing that you probably that are watching say, but you don't know what I'm going through. Get this book, read this book, then say that to me. You don't know what I'm going through because the Lord will take you through areas that you never thought possible if you just surrender to him. Ken is such an example of commitment and what that means. Make your commitment today, and I hope it's for the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you.